So these photographs were taken in a little tiny place called Pontypool, Ontario, and it's about an hour outside of Toronto. It, um, we used to go there um, during the summer, and this is a, a resort. So this particular photograph depicts one of the parties that they had a party every weekend, and this happened to be a costume party. So as you can see in the picture, I'm dressed up in a black face. My brother is four years old in this picture, and he's dressed up as an Indian brave with the war paint and the feathers. And my little sister is just sitting at the bottom with a sucker. The parents and grandparents of all these children are Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe. Some of them were even Holocaust survivors, so fairly recent immigrants. The children, of course, are very shaped by their family's histories and um, a lot of history of anti-Semitism and persecution. So that's the family, but what becomes even more powerful, I think, is the media of the day. So this is a time of John Wayne, Cowboys and Indians on TV, um, white picket fences on Leave it to Beaver Street. And the children are become very assimilated into North American culture and absorb everything that's going on. And of course, at the time, it was embodying stereotypes that were used very freely and without thought in all of the popular media of the day. So on the back of these cut-up figures, I have montage some pages from the New Canadian Geography textbook, which was actually published in 1899. And I've chosen some pages from the human geography area where they've actually illustrated a globe and marked off the world in races. So brown race, yellow race, red race, black race, and white race. And then they go on to describe all the different people in the different countries and they're described very much in colonial terms. So when I first read this a few years ago, it was really shocking to read it and really seeing that where this colonial thought, where the colonial thought was at the turn of the last century. But um, as I thought more about it, I was thinking, well, you know what, those comments that you see on the internet about stories or on Facebook, they're not very far off. They may be using different words, but the ideology is pretty colonial, pretty much the same. What I did was I invited some other artists, colleagues, to participate in the exhibition by responding to my work from their own perspectives. Tannis comes speaks from a First Nations experience in Canada and very much uh, references an indigenous Holocaust. And she made that connection when she spoke, when we talked about the background of the people, the children in, in this photograph. And Samuel Roybois is speaking from a mixed heritage position. That's a photograph of him and his daughter. And uh, when you see it, you can see that they actually look quite different on the surface until you really examine the photograph and then you see there's a lot of similarities. Um, so he also installed a mirror. A lot of the intent of this work is for the viewer to feel ref themselves reflected in this work. So for him to actually pick up on the idea of the mirror was amazing. So when you walk in to the gallery, you see this work reflected in the mirror. But if you come to a place where you see yourself in the mirror, you're superimposed on top of these children. So actually on the evening of the opening, a number of people came up to me and told me about 
the Indian costumes that they had when they were little. And um, so it's really about trying to look, me getting people to look at themselves and to stop and think if they use these kinds of stereotypes now, is this right? How can this be right? How can I be appropriating other people's um, other people's identity and using it as a costume?